Welcome to the Home Ownership Podcast presented by Movementum Realty, located in Hanover, Massachusetts. This series covers all things real estate and the best practices for buying, selling, and owning property. Now here is your host, Sean Maloney. Welcome to episode 202, Selling a House As Is. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Maloney. Thanks for joining me this week. This week, I want to talk to you about selling a home as is. First off, I want to preface this. I'm not an attorney, and I want you all to be very, very, very careful selling a house as is. Massachusetts has some strict laws. We may be buyer beware, but we do have known material defect laws where if you have a known material defect, you need to tell people about it. We also have laws to do with lead paint disclosures as well as septic systems and underground tanks. Can't just waive these things. Some people think by just writing the simple term as is, they are off the hook for everything. That's not true, but selling as is can save you money, can save you time. Let's run it all down here today. Let's get you a better understanding in this little crash course about selling a house as is in the state of Massachusetts. First off, selling a house as is does not protect you as a seller from needing to disclose known material defects. Failure to disclose these items could lead to future lawsuits. What are these items? Maybe the house gets water. Maybe the house has a known mold issue. Maybe the house has known asbestos. All the different things that are past issues that are known that we are just pretending to throw under the rug by using the terminology as is. I'm not saying that they can't be broken items on the house, but all the known broken items, all the things that have already happened, those known material defects, you need to disclose those even if you write as is. It's not a bad idea on an as-is listing to throw up a seller's disclosure to tell them every single thing that's going on with that home because future lawsuits can and will come from this. And what I've seen happen is an insurance claim one time where a person made a claim and the insurance company says this claim is a claim that's happened more than one time. And sure enough, the seller had not told the buyer about a big problem. This is huge problems, folks. We can't just lie to each other. That's not allowed. Massachusetts is a caveat emptor state, which means buyer beware. When buying a house as is, it's very important that you do your due diligence before making the offer. And as a seller, it's also important selling as is that you feel confident that the buyer has done their due diligence because you don't want to try to spring it back on you later when there's a problem. We all know we love to move fast in the as-is category, right? The reason we put it up there is we really don't want to do work. We don't want to wait the time work is going to take. We don't want to spend the money that work's going to cost. We're just trying to get done with the property. But just a teeny bit of hesitancy to make sure that they've seen the house, make sure that they've come by, make sure that they've done their inspection if they're doing one, make sure of all those things so that you're not caught on the hook and the house doesn't bounce back up. Selling as is is one thing. Selling as is and bouncing on and off the market can be painful, time consuming, and lead to a much lower sale price, which is not good for you, the seller. Buyers, again, you want to do your due diligence ahead of time before you put the offer in. If they're selling it as is, most commonly, the state of Massachusetts, what the truth of an as is sale, like what does the as is really actually mean? It means that what you see here is what you're buying. So I don't want to hear it later on that home inspection says the windows are older, or home inspection says that the roof might need to be replaced in the future, or all these things. If the roof isn't leaking, it's not a known material defect. I don't need to disclose that it's not a problem. It's up to you to determine whether a 20-year-old roof that doesn't leak is a problem for you or not. But if you're buying it as is, when you write that original offer, it means when you drove by and looked at everything, we're not willing to adjust later on at the appraisal. We're not willing to adjust later on at the inspection or any of these other things, if they're even willing to accept an inspection at all. Reason for the non-acceptance of an inspection is a lot of times the seller is just your average homeowner, right? And they don't know too much about their home. They know when something's broken, so they get it fixed. But you're about to bring in an expert that's about to tell them everything that's broken on the house. And then in a no material defect state, after they leave, if you decide you don't want to buy the house and you walk away, they now have a whole bunch of known material defects that they might have to disclose to future parties unless they have them taken care of or they get it ruled out by another inspector or they have a contractor by to look at. So sometimes the sellers don't want to give this inspectionary time because they don't want the risk that comes with it of basically getting their house deemed even worse than they thought it was and then having to deal with these no material defects when a buyer walks away. Most of the time on the as is, you're best to bring your contractors, bring your uncle, bring all the people that you have confidence in 
to the time where you're going out whether it be for a private tour or you're going to the open house so that way there you can do your due diligence ahead of making that offer so that you can have a better relationship with the seller and the seller will be more willing to accept the offer houses sold as it usually warrants offers being less right so if you're a seller and you're selling your house for as is you're not going to have as many offers why because bank finance most of the time, a lot of the bank financing will not finance as-is homes, depending on what is actually wrong with them. So understanding what's wrong with your home before writing as-is can be important too, because I've seen as-is written on a listing before, and what they actually just meant was, oh, we're not willing to do any work, but there's nothing wrong with the home. So they're disqualifying themselves from the financing before they really were disqualified from the financing. Be very careful about that if you're a seller. Understand what can get financing and what can't because a lot of things can get financing such as 203k home loans and different things so disqualifying everything finance is not always the best idea and it's not that sold as is can't get those 203ks but a lot of the FHA VA things like that you're not going to be able to get through with the regular one so there's going to be less people which means less offers which means overall selling as is sometimes takes a discount Overall, what I want you guys to understand about this lesson is selling a home is a complex process and making decisions in it is a complex process. You should engage your real estate agent and talk and say why it is you want to sell your home and what it is you're trying to accomplish. If you do that and you're honest with them, they'll be able to tell you so much more. They'll be able to help guide you in the process so that way that you can decide whether to spend a couple dollars so that you can get back more money or sell as is to get out of there tomorrow. Over here at Movementum Realty, we call our agents Move Mentors because we believe that they're both a mentor and a guide in the process of buying, selling, and owning homes. If you're thinking about selling a home as is, reach out to us. We'd love to connect you with one of our agents. If you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, please make sure to do so. Tell everyone you know about it. Also, if you haven't checked out the blog yet, check it out on our website, www.movementumrealty.com. Thanks for listening this week, and I look forward to talking to you next week.